One of my first jobs was as a server at an Italian restaurant. I had never worked at a restaurant before, and unfortunately for me, this particular restaurant required that every single item be carried out on a tray. And on my first day, oh my gosh, I dropped an entire tray of soda glasses on a customer's lap. That was not fun. And I wish I could say that was the last time it occurred. However, I would go on to spend the next several weeks in new employee hell. My tray dropping experiences were so embarrassing that I walked into work every single day feeling terrified. I vividly recall this one time I was sitting in the car before work, shaking, scared, uttering this desperate Hail Mary prayer like, oh God, don't let me drop any soda glasses on my customers today. I mean, I was mortified just at the thought of walking through those doors. But then one day, I decided I had enough. I walked into my manager's office and I requested to take a tray home. He was like, uh, we typically don't allow that sort of thing here. But then I reminded him that if he allowed me to take a tray home, I could probably save him a lot of money on those discounts that he had to give to compensate customers for my tray dropping routine. I promised him, if you let me take this tray home, I will practice it until I get it right. And by the time I come back to work next week, I will be a tray carrying rock star, sir. He obliged, but he also made it clear that the stakes were now raised. If I came back to work next Monday and I didn't have my A game ready, there would be zero excuses. The pressure was on. I spent that entire Saturday walking around in my apartment, practicing my tray balancing act. This is not exactly my idea of a great, fun, exciting way to spend a weekend. Nevertheless, I chose to do it because I was so put off by the thought of going to work every day and feeling terrified. So while my friends were inviting me to come to the beach or go hang out at the movies, I chose to spend my Saturday and my Sunday stacking glasses on a tray. For one whole weekend, I transformed my little apartment into a tray carrying master class. And I didn't experience any regret about using my free time, fun time, to work on boring work-related stuff. I was determined to be good. I wanted to walk back into my job with confidence. And from that day forward, I did. That one weekend changed my entire life. Here's what I learned. Lesson number one, getting better is a mental decision. You will continue to wrestle with the same problems over and over and over again until you choose to take the time to get better. Problems were meant to be outgrown and no one can outgrow your problems for you. You can't pray away your problems. You can't complain away your problems. You have to face them head on. Lesson number two, if you don't take the time to get better now, then your problems are only going to eat up more and more of your time until they eventually consume your entire life. You see, sometimes we think, oh, I know I should develop that skill, but I'm really busy, I don't have the time. But when you're too busy to develop new skills, you waste even more time through incompetence. You see, I had the idea of taking a tray home and practicing at least two weeks before I acted upon it. So why did I take so long? Well, I took so long because I told myself, oh, I don't wanna spend my free time or my fun time thinking about work-related stuff. Because I wasn't willing to spend any time outside of work thinking about work, I was constantly anxious about work because I knew that when I went there, I would have a bad time. Ironically, when I invested just a little bit of my free time into getting better at work, things got easier and I thought about work less. For the first time, my free time actually felt free. When you put in the work, you don't have to run from the work. Lesson number three, getting better 
requires perseverance and self-ownership. There is no help quite like self-help. We all know what it's like to be in a situation where we feel like, ah, I just don't know what to do. But the people who achieve progress are the ones who take responsibility for getting the answers. They refuse to accept I don't know as the final answer. You know, this idea of practicing a tray didn't come to me right away. I had to spend some time thinking about it. I had to stick with the problem until I arrived at a solution. And when I needed someone else's help, I had to take personal responsibility for making the ask. That's how it works. If I had waited for my coworkers to feel sorry for me, to come along and save me, I probably would have lost my job. So, what's your tray? What's that burden that you've been carrying around? What's that embarrassing problem that you've been too afraid to talk about? I'd like you to know that whatever it is, you do not have to live your life in anxiety and fear. You don't have to keep being defeated or discouraged or dragged down by the same old themes. You have the power to take initiative. You have the power to ask for help. You have the power to exercise creativity, even if that means foregoing the luxury of waiting for someone else to notice that something is wrong. You have the power to develop your strengths, to develop new skills, even if that means doing something that's unconventional or inconvenient or uncomfortable. It's time. It's time to honestly address whatever issues are holding you back, no matter how embarrassing they are. And even if it takes up some of your free time, some of your fun time, some of your weekend time, it'll be more than worth it. You can get better. It's time to figure out a way. It's time to learn how to carry the train.